Hello grade 10, welcome to another video with me, Ms. Martins. I'm a physical sciences and a math teacher, so if you want to see more physics, chemistry and maths videos, please let me know in the comments below what topic you want to see. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe so that I know that you want more things. I am planning on doing a whole exam prep series where I go through past papers, so let me know what you want to see in the comments below. Today we're going to go over the kinetic molecular theory, a brief introduction. I know some of you have been asking for this, so let's do it. The kinetic molecular theory says that all matter, my coffee cup, my cell phone, me, you, your computer, your phone, whatever you're watching this on, everything is made up of atoms and particles. And particles are always moving. Even if you think they're not, they are. In a solid, you may not see the particle movement, but at a microscopic level, Atoms and particles possess kinetic energy, which means they possess velocity, which means that they are moving. In a solid, it might not be obvious, but particles are vibrating in fixed positions. As we move on to other phases of matter or states of matter like liquid, gas, plasma, these particles gain more energy. Therefore, the kinetic energy increases and the particles move faster. It's these sort of things that you need to know and understand when it comes to the kinetic molecular theory. But in a nutshell, what you need to know is that movement, how fast the particles are moving, their velocity, their kinetic energy, that determines the phase of the matter, whether it's solid, liquid or gas. Here is a brief illustration of the differences between solid, liquid and gas. In solid states, you can see the particles are close together, higher density, they're packed in fixed positions, they vibrate or move in fixed positions. In liquid, the matter maintains a fixed volume. So if I pour water into a cup versus a box, that liquid, that water, will take the shape that it'll make, uh, it'll mold itself to the volume, to that shape of that container. In a gas state, however, the matter expands to occupy whatever volume is available. And that's why if you spray air freshener on the one side of the room, the person on the other side may not smell it initially, but give it time, those little particles expand to occupy the whole volume of the room. In gases, the particles also move very quickly, bounce against the container walls, bounce against each other, and that's why the pressure for gases is higher. You can compress gases, but you can't compress a solid. Here's another illustration of a solid versus a liquid versus a gas. Now it's very important to understand that a state in which a substance exists, so whether it's liquid, solid or gas, depends on the kinetic energy of its particles. And kinetic energy is related to speed. You will learn in further sections later on in grade 10, 11 and 12 that kinetic energy, the formula for kinetic energy is half times mass times velocity squared. So you can see velocity is speed. So how fast the particles move, their speed determines the kinetic energy. We know that gases, the particles move a lot faster than solids, for example. And the intermolecular forces, so those are the forces that hold particles together in solids and liquid phases. In gas phases, intermolecular forces are almost non-existent or very, very weak. Now, it's very important to note that temperature and heat are not exactly the same thing. We won't really get into it into this video. The temperature of a substance is a measure of a particle's average kinetic energy or the, the particles in the substance's average kinetic energy. That's very important. You need to know that. If we have a higher temperature, the particles move a lot faster. They have a higher kinetic energy. Now, how do I make a substance change phase? How does it go from a solid to a liquid to a gas? That happens when I add heat or I add energy. Now remember, I did mention that heat is not exactly the same as temperature. So I can add heat to a substance and its temperature can stay the same. This sounds a little bit weird, but when we do the heating curve, it will make sense to you. But for now, just focus on the fact that if I add heat or energy, if I increase it or if I decrease it, I can cause a phase change. See if you can fill in these phase changes with me. So if I go from a solid to a liquid, that is called melting. Okay, so we take a solid, think about ice. If I go from solid ice, solid water, ice, to liquid water, melting. If I go the other way around, liquid to solid, it's called freezing. 
you do need to know the names of these phase changes within the kinetic molecular theory. If I go from liquid to gas, it's either called boiling, think about boiling a kettle, or it is called evaporation. Evaporation, either or, boiling or evaporation. If I go the other way, so a gas back to a liquid, it's called condensation. And we can see that inside a kettle when we boil something. We see the little water droplets condensing, the gas going back into a liquid form on the sides of the kettle. Then we've got, if I go straight from a solid directly to a gas with no intermediate liquid phase in between, so the, the key word is directly, that is called sublimation. And you do need to know that. Sublimation. And now I remember sublimation is we're going from a solid to a gas, solid sublimation, solid directly to a gas, and then the reverse going from a gas back to a solid is called deposition. So those are called phase changes, phase changes, and yes, you do need to know them. Just be careful because if a question in the exam asks you to state the phase, then you have to say solid, liquid, or gas. If they say the phase change, you have to give me melting, freezing, condensation, one of those. So I love this photo. It kind of summarizes everything very, very nicely. And you can see that as I go from the solid phase to the gas phase, I'm adding heat energy. Just so you know, plasma is another phase of matter. It's a state of matter in which gaseous substances become ionized it's, and basically the electrons escape from the atoms and it leaves positively charged protons. Free electrons, free pro, uh, protons, that is where we get the ionized gas phase and it's called plasma. We also get this really cool thing, just as a side note, it's called oobleck, it's a non-Newtonian fluid or liquid and the state that of matter that it's in. So whether it's more solid or whether it's more liquid depends on the pressure that you apply to the substance itself. So if I squeeze the substance, it becomes a solid. If I relax the pressure, if I remove the pressure, it turns into a liquid. Let me know in the comments below if you'd like me to make some of this on my YouTube channel. Here's a summary of all the differences between solid, liquid, and gas. They can ask this in an exam, they can ask you to tabulate it, they can ask you to list differences. So I would pick three, maybe four, learn the differences, and there we go, you're all set for your exam. In the next video, we will be looking at the heating curve. If you guys want it, let me know down below if you'd like to see me go over the heating curve. And don't forget to subscribe. Let me know whatever else you want me to do, whatever else you want me to see on this channel. I'm making content to help you guys. So thank you for watching and I hope you enjoyed the video.